Just when you thought T.J. Watt couldn't get any better at football, he goes and masters the peanut punch. I'm a retired NFL linebacker here to tell you why this is one of the coolest, most valuable, and most rare skills any football player can acquire, any defender can acquire. The peanut punch originated, the, the term was coined by Peanut Tillman, a longtime legendary cornerback for the Chicago Bears during the run of Erlacher and all those guys. He, I, and I don't think anyone before him had done this, this is real creativity on the field, and a huge risk. He, especially as a cornerback, would be in an open field tackle situation where the runner has a two-way, three-way go on him. You can run him over, left, right, whatever. He goes to secure the tackle, gets in position, and he would, boom, precisely just punch the ball out of the guy's hand, even before securing the tackle, but putting himself in position to do so. It's so cool, uh, you just want to be his friend. So, as if T.J. Watt wasn't already good enough, again, I mean, what you know from T.J. Watt, there are certain players that are just consistent. They're going to consistently go out there. They're just these blue-collar guys, and, and they're dependable and consistent, and that's great. And sometimes, a lot, of, a lot of times, those players, they play a long time, and they're not necessarily the best guys, but you can depend on them. They're not going to make the splash plays, but T.J. Watt is going to be consistently awesome. Uh, he's going to consistently go out there and make those splash plays. He's, you're going to expect for him to make game-changing plays just about every single game, whether it's sacks, forced fumbles, um, all of the above. He's consistently all first-team All-Pro handsome as well. Let's just throw that in there. And it pains me that I had to make this observation, and he really came to the next level with it when playing the Raiders. My heart broke for Dylan Lauby. First NFL carry, and he's one for one on carries that are forced fumbles that go to the other team. And when you watch this play from the wide angle in real time, it just looks like he's going in there and making the tackle and it, you know, accidentally popped the ball out. Wrong. You go to the other angle right now, and it's slowed down. You see that he very deliberately punches that ball out unreal and then he did it twice so you want to blame things on Lauby don't ever give him the ball again no, no no did it to Amir Abdullah too there's not many running backs that would have hung on to both of those balls I mean it's it's another level they're not used to that kind of pressure you're used to maybe an arm hitting it and they can kind of secure it there but when you're deliberately putting all of your force into a small area and precisely hitting it that's tough to hang on to and man I wish I had this skill when I was playing but let me first Tell you how incredibly hard this skill is to master. We have to break a few things down to just have the understanding of how incredibly awesome this skill is and how why it's so rare. So to have the presence of mind, like the presence of mind under the pressure of how fast the NFL moves and how fast you have to make decisions and determine how to get in position to make the tackle and is he going to bounce? He's not. I'm going to have outside contain and hit him here and get my head on the right side. It's extraterrestrial level to, on top of being in position for the tackle, to somehow, when he's swinging his arm back and forth, find and anticipate where it's going to be and punch the ball out. It's a huge risk, and you're betting on yourself, which tells me, obviously, you have to be unconsciously competent in being able to make and secure a tackle, one. Um, but also, you have to even, even to have the wherewithal to think to, to punch a ball out or to strip a ball is a skill in and of itself. So you have to master the tackle and being in position to do so. Um, but then, again, you're putting yourself in this insane risk, you, you know, because if to punch a ball out, you're not going to punch a ball out before, I mean, after securing a tackle. A lot of coaches will teach you, you know, got to get that ball out, you know, yeah, yeah, secure the tackle, and then we go for the ball. So whether that's you securing the tackle and then ripping the ball out, you know, trying to get your hand on the tip of it and rip it out. Or somebody else, a teammate, secures the tackle and then you go, and those, you know, pull it out or, or punch it out. And every coach will sit there and tell you as if they've done it their entire lives. You just go punch the ball out, you know, as if they were just a master. No, you weren't. They weren't doing it. Nobody does it. Hardly anybody does it. Peanut Tillman and now TJ Watt are the only people who consistently would punch a ball out with a right hook. Now, TJ will probably get to that level, but Peanut Tillman is still 
top of the top with that skill because he was always in pretty much always in a one-on-one -on -one situation open field tackle with tons of space it's not near the line of scrimmage as a cornerback and he had the ability to do it right hand and left hand with precision okay so first off coaches aren't going to teach you they're going to say secure the tackle first and then try to get the ball out but they're never going to complain if you just don't secure the tackle and punch that ball out because there's nothing cooler than getting the ball so you become a turnover machine in a way that nobody else in the league is doing it by punching a ball out. Um, the other piece of this is when you're making a tackle, in the, the human instinct, any, anytime anything gets near your face, especially contact, it's to close your eyes. So coaches will say, you know, try to have your eyes open when you're making a tackle. Way easier said than done. Even if you're thinking about it, your, your eyes just naturally, like if any of you have had contacts in the past, you know that, you can, it takes you like 50 tries to get each lens in because even though you know it's like, hey, it's coming, it's going to be okay, your, your eye just won't let you do it. So imagine how many tackles you have to practice to be able to actually keep your eyes open while you're making a hit. I would get so pissed off. I would see pictures of me making tackles and you could just see my mug and I'm like this as I'm taking the guy down. Um, but the reason they say that is because you want to be aware. You want to be able to be thinking while you're hinking the tackle, hey, the ball's right there. I can just slip this tip of the ball down and it's going to be a forced fumble. Um, and then also, how do you train it? How do you train punching the ball out? You can do it in practice and stuff, but like, how do you do that in a training situation? It's, it's just one of those things that takes time to develop. He's in year eight of the NFL. That makes sense. Um, and he was already a turnover machine. Since entering the NFL... He has led the NFL in forced fumbles and sacks, 101, 100 plus sacks in the NFL since entering in 2017 and 30 forced fumbles. It's unreal. So he was already very cognizant of strip sacks and strip sacks are awesome. But this is a next level. So I think his forced fumble numbers are going to go way up. Um, and, and listen, a sack is great, but most, most pass rushers aren't even thinking about the ball very much. They're just... It's such a fight all game long with the offensive tackle and being double teamed and all these things. It's such a fight to even get near the quarterback and pressure him. And then you finally, maybe you'll get one sack a game. Most guys are just like, oh, just give me the number. Give me that sack. I just want to secure it. And that's great. Getting a lot of sacks is great. But you know what's two times better is getting a strip sack. What's three times better is you guys recover that. And now it's a turnover. What's four times better is you recover it and you score a touchdown on defense. And what's five times better is you strip the ball and you pick it up and you run it to the zone. Um, again, it pains me that he did it against the Raiders, but I'm excited for him. I think he has been conned out of at least one Defensive Player of the Year award. And I think he's developed this and he's coming back with a fury to say, there's no way in hell you're going to deny me. And if he keeps playing this way, there's no way in hell anyone will deny him. And if you disagree, then you better go and subscribe, dude. I'll tell you what, I freaking dare you, dog. Go and subscribe if you disagree with me. Just kidding. Love y'all.